uh, uh, we can approach it with the um, uh, polymeric wires and if it's not successful we can uh, assess it with the iOS and see where the proximal cap is and then with the uh, double lumen catheter or a blocking balloon in the septal we can try the polymeric uh, guide wire to for the proximal cap uh, palpate it and then try to penetrate it I, I think that's a great point. I think, so, so first of all, obviously, you know, the CTO experts now recommend that there are two anti-grade retrograde, so that you can see what retrograde options are. Obviously, in Pakistan, and in my practice, we try anti-grade first, because of the time and cost. Ki se bhi. Um, this also highlights the challenge that different views, may, maybe just let me play it again, in different views, the stump appears differently. So, in view, the stump identify karna is very difficult to do that. Can you play the first video? One video is stopped, if you play it. And I think what this highlights nicely is that the area of cranial view is that there's a stump there, there's a taper, but it peters out. And in fact, that might be just a branch of the septal. But when you look at the spider view, in the LAO caudal, you can see that it's fairly blunt. And blunt stump ka challenge is that if you find the right spot, you can be intra plaque. But if you're in the wrong spot, you end up being extra plaque. And for extra plaque, ka hai, it's very difficult to re enter sometimes. So I think the take home message for me would be ke, uh, to truly understand it, you do obviously do dual injection, but you do the injection in multiple views so that you can see different sites. Dekh sake. Now, obviously, where the geography ki capability is finished, there is also the IVAS ki capability. Shuru hoti hai. And if you still cannot identify ambiguity, then you can use IVAS. Use so, excellent points. Uh, as uh, Dr. Salman elaborated, ke, No, I'll, so I'll, I'll let Nasser bhai answer first, uh, so inshallah, then I'll answer. So we are coming to that point also. Uh, what are the ways to figure out where is the ambiguous gap? But the first important thing is that uh, you need to see in different views that you have proximal gap or tapering Dr. Shafi has said that there might be a tapering and, uh, near the septal, but you can't be sure. You can't be 100% sure that the proximal gap is from septal or diagonal. Ke beech mein kahan se and that might be the reason for previous failed attempt. Uh, and the second point is that you have different views. You might be able to find the proximal cap in different views. Uh, and the third point is that whether there is an option for retrograde or not, so you need to see ke right se which collaterals are and, e and what is the right coronary artery like. So these are the other views like aleocranial and the right coronary artery views. So you can see there are not a lot of collaterals from the right side and there is also a severe tight lesion in the right coronary artery. Achha. I, Subjana, sorry, I actually stopped this, so no matter what, I stopped this one. I was stopped for a second, so I didn't stop it. So, the other thing I was talking about is symptoms. You know, the true CTO is that usually you don't get chest pain. Chest pain comes when you have ischemia. In CTOs, I think you have to be tired, fatigue, or exertional dyspnea is more common in my experience. Almost all patients didn't complain of that. If you have pain, that often means that your donor artery may be disease. Okay, here you are looking at that your donor artery is probably the RCA. RCA may be disease hai, and that's why sometimes if I have a CTO where the donor artery has disease, I will treat the donor first and then attempt the CTO. So ye baat ek hai. Hai ke this is a nice view in the LAO cranial view or the AP cranial view, you can see that this is truly an ambiguous stump. Aapka nazar hai ke there's this large diagonal branch going off, there's a large septal coming off, or unme kahi pe se aare Now, is it from, the challenge is, ke, is it from here? Or is it from somewhere here? Kahan se jo hai na, ye nikal hai. So I think that's a, a challenge. Now, CTA ki baat hui thi. You know, in Japan, they do CTA for all of their CTOs. Kyunki wahan pe CTA is uh, fairly cost inexpensive. Wo apni acute chest pain ke bhi CTs karte hain. In America, we don't do that. Lekin I think, agar is marhale pe ho, jahan pe diagnostic angiogram ho, and you're going to do something, us waqt CT karna mushkil hota hai. So unless you take the patient off the table and say, kiji, this is a complicated procedure, we have to do CT, but that adds cost. So I think sometimes you have to make the decision while you're still doing the case. But that's a good point. So this brings us to the question, ke how will we resolve the ambiguous cap, ambiguity? So this is Dr. Jabbar's question, tha ke, uh, CT and Joe, that is one way to figure it out. And that might be a good option once you are planning the case. So you can do a CT scan first and then figure out where is the proximal cap and then 
uh, obviously you can puncture that gap. But once you're planning a patient for a procedure and once the patient is on table, that becomes difficult sometimes. So, so the question is where is the proximal gap? Next. And next. So if we calculate the JCT score, uh, you can see there is a blunt cap. Maybe length is not much more, but there is a previous failed attempt. So the JCT score might be two or three. Next. So what will be your strategy, anti-grade or retrograde? Tarek bhai, up. I will try first the anti-grade uh, approach as usually because there are in retrograde there is no clear-cut collaterals visible. So uh, my approach will be integrated. Yeah. So uh, yes, sir. Visible lag rahi hai aur itni blunt nahi lag rahi, thodi tapered si lag rahi. I don't know whether I am seeing it wrong or. Mujhe, you know, itni nazar nahi aayi thi, but let's let's go back to the spider view. Ji, uh, Doctor Nader, you are right. That there might be uh, suspicion that there is a proximal cap or septal cap, such as Doctor Tayyab is saying. But Achha, you can't be hundred percent sure. So, where do you see it? Yes, this is a pointer. Hai. Okay, this yes, suspicion happens, but whether this is a proximal cap or a septal, you can't be hundred percent sure. that ends up being in the diagonal. But, but I think yehi, the fact that we're discussing about it means that it may be difficult. So going back to this, achha, can you please put up the presentation? The presentation has gone from here. Thank you. Achha. So going back to that point, I was saying that, you know, anti-grade, I'll tell you that Right? So I think while the hybrid algorithm is great for places like the U.S., where we have a lot of tools and equipments, the fact of the matter is that anti-grade is always a more expensive procedure. So if you're going to do Pakistan with CTOs, then well, I don't mind you guys doing anti -grade, retrograde. I think you retrograde, especially if you have a brain graft. But in this kind of situation, mein, I would agree with Tariq bhai, ki try and do anti-grade first. Even if you have to go to sub-intimal, it's because that's still probably the more cost-effective way to do it. Because ultimately what we have to do over the next five, 10 years is come up with a CTO algorithm for Pakistan, which is more cost-effective and safe given the expertise level. Theke? That's going to be one of my goals, inshallah. But the point is that retrograde is here, you think about it first, two, three times. Okay. So Nasir, what did you do? Please, next, next. And next, go back. Sir, go back. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next question will be: If you are going to go integrate, what will be your excess, radial or femoral? In the interest of time, Nasir, I'm going okay. to move on. Aap iska so, then can... um, if you are planning to go with the IVAS, so then um, you need an, at least seven or eight French guide because th together placing an IVAS catheter along with a micro catheter, you will require a eight French guide. I have found that it might be difficult to use a seven French guide if you are going to go, uh, proceed with the IVAS catheter and micro catheter at the same time. So we decided to go with the eight French guide for the integrated uh, 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 integrate wire escalation. And to resolve the ambiguity of the proximal cap, we decided to use the IVAS. Very good point. Achha, before, so the point about the guide is well made. I would ask you, Kev, did you wire the septal or do you wire the diagonal or do you do both? So that depends Kev, uh, uh, where you are suspecting your proximal cap will be. So I first wired the septal and then I did this pullback uh, on uh, IVAS pullback from the septal to the proximal LED. And I think that is beautiful. So if you can appreciate at uh, between uh, 9 to 12 o'clock position, at 10 and 11 o'clock position, you can see the LED. Yeah, they can. So in this position, you can see a gold daira adjacent to the IVAS catheter. That's your, uh, that's your occluded cap. Now, I will ask Tariq Bhai this question because I use a technique which he taught me. If you IVAS, then how do you engage the cap uh, uh, while wiring this uh, relatively um, ambiguous cap the uh, guide wire is 
the probability will go into the septal uh, diagonal mein chali jayegi it's better that we block uh, one of these because uh, the proximal cap is closer to the septal so i'll put a blocking balloon in uh, first septal and to direct the wire at the proximal cap excellent and and mm. this is something i learned from tarik bhai so if you don't have ivs if you are or if agar ivs may be aapko resolve nahi ho masla then the blocking balloon technique is excellent or this ivs shows you exactly why it will work agar aap balloon dalte hain jahan pe so agar ivs catheter hai and you blow it up to about 2 2 mm balloon hai you do about 6 atmospheres you don't want to injure the trauma the vessel to jo peechi jagah bach jati hai jo reh jata hai lumen mein that is your cap of the cto so even though you cannot see the cap on angiography or maybe ivs aapke paas hai nahi ya aapke paas itni badi sheath nahi hai ki aap ivs aur catheter dal sake you can use the blocking balloon technique and we've used it for different vessels and i find it an extremely useful technique and that's something that i like to use and the double lumen catheter is another option uh, we put it in uh, double lumen can tell you one of the problems i found is ki double lumen mein angle hamesha bahut tight hota hai so double lumen mein if you use a double lumen to it often ends up going subintimal blocking balloon ka ye hai ki because you you have micro catheter alada you have the freedom to go out just a bit more and engage the cap properly but i have tried that also but i think double lumen more often than not we end up subintimal because of carina mein jaake jo hai na taar lagti hai what blocking balloon allows you to do is stay away from the carina and go into the cap centrally please the uh, blocking balloon in the side branch can you So I, I don't have a case here, but like in in this case, like uh, like I suggested, because we see the cap is closer to the septal, so we'll put a balloon in the septal. Mein so you'll have maybe like a two by twelve balloon, half into the septal, maybe a third into the main lumen, and you go up because it will block the septal, but the main LED is going to be bigger, so you have room around the balloon to go into the cap. Jo apka nazar aa raha hai. not deep right not deep in fact deep me karenge to you're more likely to injure the septal also so you have to have the bl blocking balloon extend slightly into the branch from which the side branch is taking off the other point is that ke ye jo small septals hoti hain isme ivs catheter also blocks their small yeah. septal and that gives you an idea and also like an effect of a blocking balloon, balloon. and you can puncture the proximal cap exactly so, so in the interest of so time we will then go to the mm -hmm. the case yeah, yeah. acha micro catheter aapne chuna turnpike so, lp yeah so a turnpike lp was chosen and next page play theek hai and so we basically <laughs> yesterday we did the talk on equipment wo baad mein bhi kar sakte hain but in the interest of time i want to make sure we show the other cases also so as dr nadir pointed out uh, probably that was the place where was the proximal cap so we have kept our ivs catheter there where we can see the proximal cap and we have directed the wire towards the proximal cap you can see on ivs image the, there is a wire uh, which is directed towards the led so you can place your ivs catheter at the proximal cap and try to puncture the proximal cap so this that's, is that's very nice or oh, this is wire is a filter xt so the question which wire you will use that depends what are you seeing on the ivs if you are not seeing a lot of calcification as evident on ivs image then you can try with a polymer coated wire like filter xt or gladius mongo um, but if you are seeing a lot of calcification on the ivs image then your first choice can be gaia or a puncture wire like uh, concas pro or confianza pro so can you can see again what you have in the ivs image if i can stop it for a second okay the right at 11 o'clock you saw that i'm going to piece it down a second ha yahan pe right around 11 between 11 and 12 o'clock we a bright shadow nazar aa raha hai aapko that bright shadow is the wire So what Nasir Bhai is able to do is that this is your blocked lumen with the ivs catheter. This is your cap. He can then position the wire to come towards this and try and explore that here there is no micro channel here. So this is uh, after wiring the vessel, and then you exchange your wire with the normal work source wire through a trapping balloon technique, and the rest of the case is same, uh, simple. wonderful so the other use of ivs is to size the vessel appropriately because that is most important uh, for the long term point of view so vessel size was about 3 distally and about 4 proximally so we placed two stents and was dilated with 3.5 and 4 open now this is your final mm -hmm. result mm -hmm. which is mashallah very so good so good so if you okay maybe we can move to talino no? Now 
this was obviously a case where the wire and the microcatheter work, the balloon blocking tech, well, the IVUS blocking or IVUS guidance technique work. What I want to talk about is something that um, I've been doing a lot, and, and Carlino, and, and I think Shafi Bhai has a case, Tariq Bhai has a case that shows something similar. But I would just want to talk about the basics of this anti-grade uh, CTO technique. So this is a 58-year-old man, and actually he's a Pakistani gentleman. So he lives in Houston, but he's from Pakistan. Um, CAD angina for three years. He had had stabilized symptoms with the renolazine uh, for a few years. Like, you know, over the past few months, his symptoms started to progress again. Uh, his cardiologist had already known from before that he had a CTO of the circumflex artery. So he sent him a PET scan. And the PET scan showed there was ischemia actually um, in the, actually, unane bheja for the LAD CTO, but, but when I looked at the angiogram, the LAD CTO was very distal and his uh, symptoms were quite prominent. So we sent him for a PET scan, and PET scan with the symptoms were mostly in the prostrolateral area. So this is his angiogram. You can see simultaneously, hopefully both of them will play. Ah, so you can see that he's got, you know, moderate disease in the sort of RCA, is a little ectatic. There's disease in that PDA, and you can see there's actually filling of the apical LAD. And this is the point I was making. When you have angina, usually there's some disease in the donor vessel also. If the donor vessel is clean, then a CTO usually gives you shortness of breath. Now, if you have a donor artery that's relatively okay and you see a CTO, then maybe it's a subtotal or more recent occlusion. They can true CTO, that shouldn't give you angina unless you've been having angina for many, many years. Now, this person obviously was having angina for many years, but it, it became from stable to unstable over a few weeks ago, and probably it's the progression of disease in the PDA. But when you look at the LAD, you can see, again, the LAD is cut off in that apical segment. So one could argue that, yes, perhaps the scheme has come from the LAD distribution. Again, for me, what was interesting is this, this um, pointer here, the, this large area, in the posterior lateral section. You can see there's absolutely no blush, but there's movement of the wall. So we know it's living. So there's no blush, but there's movement of the wall, it's living. And because we had a PET scan, I knew that this man had 36% ischemia in this region, 8% in the epic, epical LED. So I could have done the epical LED, but for me, what was interesting is, Kiji, let's see if I can try and get the circumflex open. So what we ended up doing is, Procedure planning may, again, we won't spend too much time, but this is obviously, uh, you can see the, 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 the cap is somewhat tapered. It is a long CTO. We don't have a whole lot of epicardial, we don't have a whole lot of uh, collaterals we can use, uh, and it seems to be fairly chronic. So Yampe, again, I think retrograde is not an option, and I think anti-grade is the option. Do you have any comments on that? Yes, I agree it's uh, anti-grade because it's a tapered tip, and uh, we can start with the polymer jacketed wire of like pilot 200 or. All right, so just to show you CTO basics, you know, there are only four ways to cross a CTO. <laughs> it's anti-grade or retrograde, it's intra-plaque or extra-plaque. The whole mystery of the CTO is trying to figure out which is going to work for your patient. And sometimes you have to try different techniques, you have to back and forth. Again, the point I will make is okay, anti-grade should probably be the preferred method because it's retrograde requires a lot more experience. Now, having said that, if you have failed anti-grade, so if a senior colleague has, then you can show it to him and then send the patient to them for retrograde options. Um, okay. This is the cap analysis becomes very important. So it's a tapered tapered cap. This is what the tapered cap looks like. You can see there's a narrowing. And more often than not, there's actually a microchannel that extends through here. So to, to that point, I will often take a feeler XDY and see if I can engage something in that tapered cap. This is more of a blunt cap. A blunt cap may you attack, you don't see anything, and this is more like Nasser Bhai's case. I, and I didn't see the, uh, I know you saw the, 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 the cap, I couldn't see that. Or if there's ambiguous, you don't know, is it tapered, is it blunt, and oftentimes you can see these bridging collaterals come off, which can fool you into thinking that they're uh, branches. So again, these are sort of three caps. And so if it's something like this, I like to use a hydrophilic wire, something like a feeler XT. If it's something like blunt like this, I will try hydrophilic wire, but typically the hydrophilic wire will prolapse into the side branch. And in that case, I will go ahead and take a guy or two or something to puncture through the cap. And um, I showed this yesterday. This is, uh, again, uh, some of you already have a copy of this. This is my choice of wires. Again, you get used to it in the local market or local availability, you choose the wires. But the bottom line is, microchannel probing, for tapered cap, I will use this. 
for blunt cap, I will use something like this. Now, what has changed in my practice is I don't extend the wire for too much. I use the wire to just get into the cap. The other thing I want to show you is the setup. So this is a six French guide. It's going to the radial. We do our diagnostics with the radial. I do not have, we did have a backup uh, femoral axis. I already have a four French in the femoral. However, we did not use femoral axis for this because there's no retrograde to look at. Uh, I've got the microcatheter in place. My, I use like my, uh, the, the turnpike LP because I think it's torqueable. This is my hydrophilic wire. I think this is a Xion black. And then this, uh, you can see the guide extender. So one of the things I like to use a lot is the guide extender for support. So even though I'm using six French, by using the guide extender, I can make into seven French. Now I know in Pakistan, the guide extender is expensive. So Yahape, if you want to do it, maybe you want to consider using a seven French uh, femoral axis. The other thing I do is I probed it, and uh, you can see that uh, there's difficulty. The wire starts to buckle. So, so here's the probing of the cap, and you know this is a hard cap. Okay, so it was a somewhat semi-tapered, semi-blunt cap. So next step, yeah, how do we go in? So what I ended up doing is I ended up using Gaia 2 to just puncture the cap, and I'll show you what happened next. So this is the Gaia 2 wire. We just is going a little deeper into the cap. I've been the wire buckled a bit. I moved the microcatheter in. I do a test injection to confirm, and then I inject contrast into the microcatheter. And you can see a channel has opened up. If you zoomed out, you have the same thing. And you can see the very big vessel hang hanging beyond that, which you did not see in any of the previous injections. Okay? And then this is just a, a, a regular sort of hydrophilic wire that was a Xion black, and it went all the way across. Okay? So what I want to focus on now is this technique. This is Carlino technique. So I met Carlino and he said to me, Kaji, Logan mera naam badnaam kiya hai, wo galat technique use karke. Because the way we were taught Carlino in America is ki aapko agar, if you can't penetrate the cap, a microcatheter wahan pe rakhe, balloon se aap microcatheter ko daba ke, you do a hard injection to disrupt the cap. Us mein hota ye hai ki you don't disrupt the cap, you end up going to subintimal space. And then what they do is then you use something like Stingray to get back in. While it is a reasonable technique to do, it's not the best technique because it's very destructive to the cap. When you want to do minimize the destruction to the cap or to the CTO, I think this is a better technique. Isme, what you do is you cross the cap, and the moment you cross the cap, a wire nikal. Because what you don't want to do is the wire to start making a channel, because if the wire makes a channel, then the contrast will follow that channel. Once you're inside the cap, contrast to help inject kare. And the idea is that contrast to head, that will find a path through the calcium and all the sort of soft spots, path of least resistance. In this case, we were lucky because it showed us exactly where the connection is. Now, interestingly, you don't see anything here, right? But you know that contrast must be going through here. So this is because that contrast is in planes going through that plaque. So how deep you should go into the proximal cap? Sorry? How deep you should go with the micro catheter? Come into say the come. Eight millimeter, two millimeter. If you do it too much, you can have obviously fellows who sakata me. Then you end up going towards the side. Ha! Huh, I'm going to show you that. Okay. So principal kya? Principal yeh hai ke contrast in, in modifies the plaque architecture. This creates a path of least resistance towards the true lumen. Okay. And that a general injection minimizes extensive plaque disruption. These are the principles. And technique kya hai? Technique is that you use a microcatheter and you park the uh, microcatheter adjacent to the proximal cap if it's tapered. Hai. So if the cap is tapered, you wire taper and and microcatheter ko dhuk le jayin, hai? And then you can do the first Carlino there. Zada se zada yehi hoga ki if you can't get into the plaque, it will come backwards. You're doing a tip injection. There's nothing wrong with that. But then you can go with a deeper wire and go deeper. Otherwise, you puncture the cap and part the M microcatheter tip just distal to it because you don't want to commit to the plaque too much. Then you aspirate it just to make sure there's no air left in the system. What I do is I actually flush the hub while I'm pulling the wire out because if you the wire out, the air gets sucked inside. So as someone, I start flushing the hub of the microcatheter, when I flush it out, my fellow will take the wire out. Up, keep the catheter pointed upwards so that air does not go and then you can drip the contrast into it. You can aspirate a bit to make sure it's an air-free system. And then you inject half 
to a millimeter of contrast very gently. And you have to keep the catheter tip on the Because catheter tip, may say you want to see contrast where it is going, the stain, contrast stain is going on the Because if the stain starts to get into the extra plaque space, you want to stop. Because maybe you don't want to do that. Okay, the fact that you can try it and you end, end up going extra black, but if, if, if you can, try and stop it there to understand what the stain is doing. Achha. So let's, this is the principle. Now this is a slide, Dr. Karino ki binaivi slide, he, he gave it to me. It's in his paper also. This is a high resolution CT of what a CTO looks like. So while a CTO looks like a fairly consistent thing, the fact is may there are hard spots, which is the calcium, and then there are the soft spot, which is fibro uh, so fibro fatty plaque. What contrast does is, this is a hard plaque and this is a soft plaque. What contrast does is if you inject gently, it will make a way through that to find a path of least resistance. And if you keep injecting, to ye jo, jo path bana hai yahan pe, this sort of opens up a bit, and then your wire can track along this. That's what happened in our case, that there was a CTO. You know it was a CTO because the wire would not cross, right? So the fielder, uh, the, the scion black didn't cross, the Gaia 2 didn't cross, but with the contrast, you can see, okay, the contrast did cross. But once the contrast crossed, all I did was take the same scion black and it slid across because the path had been opened up by the contrast. If you do a hard injection, however, hard injection may hota hai, the contrast will go to the side and will get into the subinternal space. And so that's the difference, and that's why you don't want to inject too hard. So this is the Carlino technique, the basis. Okay, so I'm just going to play this. This is the rest of the technique. Uh, we'll just go through this wire here. We've got the microcatheter. Microcatheter, Janira, I'm actually torquing it, and when I start torquing it, it pushes itself forward. You have a tip injection here just to confirm that I'm in the true vessel. I put my workhorse wire, knuckle kasad, I angioplasty, or this is the branch that's opened up. Now, we could have probably stopped there, but I had a concern that maybe this area, okay, this again is good, but I'm also missing something here. So I said, you know, this has worked actually quite well. Um, in the past, I've done cases like this with wire escalation. I always end up subintimal. And the problem is because there's so much disease, distally care, you can't re-enter. Okay, so what we ended up doing is, let's try Carlino for the second uh, branch. The second branch, Carlino. So here, this is the tip injection. I'm outside the cap. I'm using a Gaia 2 to get into the cap. You can see Gaia is difficult. There's some difficulty. I dig into the cap. I drive my microcatheter. Now I'm much closer to the cap, and now I'll do a hard injection here. So I'm still not in, so I went a little deeper. Again, just a millimeter, and now the injection is purely into the contrast. And look at this. A completely different stain. Absolutely different, right? Last time we did it, we saw the branch come out. Is the far you're not seeing a branch. You saw a stain here, and there was a little smoke You saw a little smoke signal. Then what we used is a a feeler XT wire, or here it made a knuckle and it popped right through. So I'll, I want to show you that again. And this is the second branch, okay. And I'm going to ask you ballooning key, and this is your second OM, which is actually just as large as the first one. But what I want to focus on is this part. Both of them are in the plaque, right? We created a short channel into the distal vasculature or here it opened we know where the OM is. Here Carlino mein contrast swells up in the adventitia, it hasn't gone back, it hasn't gone into a sub space. If it starts making this train track, yeah, tram-like appearances, like a rail car track, then obviously you can think you're sub like here there's is adventitial swelling and at some point the contrast will break into the side branch. So when you saw the tips, what do you uh, the diagram say the hard tip may tapered, blunt, or ambiguous mein, there was a side branch. Because kudati torpe, the CTO banta hai, the CTO banta hai, kisi side branch ki had tak. Because whatever the process is, it stops at the side branch because in the side branch there's flow of blood. The khun ka bahao jo hai, wahan pe thrombus banne deta nahi hai. That's why almost always, except if it's an osteal CTO, it, your, your CTO will always start at a side branch. So, yahan pe kya hua? Here, contrast came through the plaque, caused this sub adventitial swelling, and it broke into a side branch. 
when you see something like this, this is not a perforation. लोग कहते हैं वो perforation हो गई है। It's such a gentle injection कि इतनी gentle injection से perforation हो नहीं सकती। Now, if I was pushing a wire through and the wire suddenly did this, yes, I'd be concerned about that. But यहाँ पे typically where the elbow is between the side branch, usually this is where the the takeoff is. Now, this is one of my earlier cases. We use a knuckle wire. Now, what I do is I used a wire, but I don't knuckle it. I try to position it right where the branch is coming off and see if I can make a direct connection. And again, you would have thought that the knuckle would go into the side branch, like a knuckle jo hai, went into the straight CTO. Okay. So now that we have this, uh, we can go ahead and finish this uh, intervention. Obviously, both of them ended up being quite big. We um, actually we were undersized. Here we ended up using a, a, a mini crush strategy. So that's the stent. We crush kiya. Then you put another stent. Uh, we'll stent it, we'll rewire it, and uh, we'll just go to the very last. Actually, I'll just show you, in the interest of time, I'll show you the final result of kya tha. This is the final. This is what we started off with. They wanted me to fix this, and this is what we ended up with. Or this case, if you started at 1150 and ended at 116. So we were basically dead ghante mein sara case hua. So a CTO which a man has had for decades, we did it under two hours, with contrast load of only about 75 cc's, and he felt fantastic after this. So I just wanted to show this to show you that Carlino, jo hai, us, uska jo hai na, uh, principle kya hai and how I do it. Okay. Thank you. Jo tisi presentation hai, uh, Shafi ke naam se wo laga de. Okay. So just the way you know, I have learned a lot of stuff from. From Tariq Bhai, I think Tariq Bhai has been learning some stuff from me, though I think he has much more to teach than I have to teach him. Um, so this is a case that he did, which I think is fascinating. So, because it's his case, Nasir Bhai, I think we'll start off with you. Aap iska analysis karin, but let me tell you the history. History ye hai, this is 46-year-old man with CAD prior cabbage. Now he's very young, obviously. Class 3 angina ke saath aarai, which obviously means ke agar C2 hai, to maybe the donor is also involved. Uh, Tariq Bhai got a CT angio, patent lima, occluded brain graft to the OM and RCA, and this is the angiogram. What do you feel? So this is a difficult case. I think lima is patent, so you don't see the LED proper, mm -hmm. but you can see that there's a large epicardial collateral mm -hmm. coming from the diagonal branch. Yeah, exactly. Probably that filling a big right coronary artery. Ah. So and we can't see the epics, but probably an epicardial collateral filling the right coronary artery. It's a big vessel. And I think, you know, planning case, you can see, when if you're having angina, the donor may come to Look at this. Here, it's diagonal branch mein disease hai. And sometimes the donor has moderate disease. Moderate disease is not enough to cause a problem in the donor, but it, it is enough to cause a problem in the collateral. Because the, the normal artery that got muscular air, so it can auto-regulate. Collaterals are they are stretched out. They don't have that capacity to auto-regulate. It's a collateral is highly dependent on the pressure coming into it. So when you have donor disease, just like I'm the the collateral gets compromised. But there's at least there's an option if you wanted to go retrograde. But this is the actual CTO. Oh, that's right, what do you so, think? So we can see uh, RCA is occluded distally, and we can't see a very clear proximal cap. There's also a lot of disease in the mid segment. No, I think I was trying to stop it. So, Excellent. So it's tapered. Again, you have a branch point saying it's tapered. And maybe here there's a connection, or maybe it's a tapered cap. Uh, Microphone creep. Lateral, if you look at the wiring, it was an ambiguous cap. वो ही पैरेलल वायर है पैरेलल ब्रांच है जो केस में चल रही है तो चूंकि ये पोस्ट बाइपास था तो लगता है ये बहुत पुरानी बंद है और उसका यानी इस बात से एम्बिगुअस एंड हार्ड प्रॉक्सिमल क्या ठीक सो आई थिंक दैट्स रीजनेबल के के वी डोंट नो के टेपर्ड है या पैरेलल ब्रांच है या कोई माइक्रो चैनल ह� 
I think there is uh, calcification there, but we, w we can probe with a filter XT to see whether there is a microchannel or not, along with the support of microcatheter. Uh, we, need, we will need a lot of support in this vessel because uh, this is a distal region, the vessel is torturous. So you need a better guide support and the microcatheter, and I shall start with the field direct. Beautiful. It's like you read my mind. Exactly. Better guide support, you need good guide support. If you don't have a guide action, that's okay. Yahan pe microcatheter ki zarurat hai because of the tortuosity. So kai the fake saal jo aata hai ki ji acha, why don't we use over the wire balloon? Because over the wire balloon cannot do so many turns and, and stay as mobile and flexible. That's the tip. So, the flexibility of the wire ki tip, mein hai, you lose that because the catheter itself over the wire balloon becomes so stiff. So, if you want a low gram tip weight, so you use a micro catheter because the micro catheter can change it. You can pull it back and let the tip be soft. But over the wire balloon, to have, because you have to make it into the bend, it usually is closer to the wire tip and it makes it a little too stiff. In such a scenario, choice of micro catheter. So again, d different logo on Tarik, what did you use micro catheter wise? I use Corsair. Corsair. Uh, to track the Corsair, I use the workhorse wire. This is another important point. Because if we don't use the workhorse wire to track the Corsair at the proximal tip, tip of the CTO, we can damage the CTO wire. Excellent. So I think you need a micro catheter with flexibility ho or torqueability. Ho. So Corsair or Turnpike are good catheters to torque. Fine cross we can do, but fine cross up can not do. Because once, if the wire goes across, you want to maybe able to rotate the catheter because you're not getting the support from the guide as much. You don't have the guide extender. So I think a torqueable micro catheter uh, with a tapered tip. Tapered is it can get into it. It can drive itself into it. Again, fine cross ki tip blunt hoti hai. So that would be my choice too. And again, that's a very good point. Okay, you don't want, again, wires are expensive. If you have a wire, wire ki tip khas hai. You don't want to destroy the tip before you even get to the cap. So it's that you use workhorse wire, use kare, get through all the open spaces. Once you're close to the actual proximal cap, then you change out for the tip that you, the specialized wire that you want to use. And again, this is, we already talked about this. So this is the first attempt. Uh, he's using the lateral view. And here you can see that maybe there's a micro channel. So you can see something is going across. So it's hard to say whether that's a true RCA or whether that's a PDA or some parallel branch coming off. So this is cap analysis. I'm going to skip this in the interest of time. And this is now, which wire was this, Tarik Bhai? Fielder FC. As a fielder FC. Yeah. Uh, and then I tried pilot 200. Achha. So this is pilot 200. Yeah. So it seems to be knuckling, but actually it's a wide knuckle. So maybe it's going to some side branch. Then I took uh, a and guy then, second. Sorry? Then it took the third wire was guy second. Guy second. So this is not the but guy second though. This is, this yeah, is yes. the this is guy second. A guy okay. second. Achha. Again, so it's such a wide thing. So yeah, two things are happening. Either he's curling up against the proximal cap, or he's going to side branch with the guy a second, right? I know Tariq Bhai did not do. He's obviously much accomplished. He didn't do a dual injection, but here the dual injection can be useful because you can then see how far are you from the actual distal target. If you want to do parallel wiring, what you can do is you can leave the first wire in this position. Isi ke upar phir dual lumen catheter lagayem. And then with the second injection, you can see ke kis direction mein aapne second wire guzarni hai. So, but, but he did something interesting, which was this. So he did a Carlino. Now, when you did this, were you actually doing a Carlino? Or you were just doing a tip injection? This was Carlino. Achha, Carlino. Okay. So this was done purely for Carlino. So he knew because the wire is not moving, he's probably just across the cap. Yeah. He did an injection, and again, you can see the gentle injection. Or wohi hua jo hamne pehle dekha tha ki contrast fills the adventitial space and it breaks into the branches. Yahan pe bolke three branches nazar aa rahe right? There's an ongoing RCA, ek upar ko shaakh ja rahi, ek niche ko shaakh ja rahi, and again, this is what contrast does in a Carlino. And then at that point. Uh, uh, next wire is a Fielder FC again. Fielder FC again? Yeah, yeah. You say okay. with the knuckle. 
and I crossed part of the CTO segment uh, with Knuckle because it's very tortuous and calcified on uh, CTA okay. in a long segment. So when I straightened this Knuckle and uh, pushed that uh, forcer forwards, the wire popped out into the trulioma. Asha, so wire popped. Yeah. Did it pop from the actual Knuckle? Uh, when the Knuckle was straightened, Asha, I just rotated it at the tip of the microcatheter, it entered into the trulioma. So I guess the channel that had been made, we were able to get yeah. through that channel and yeah, pop it. The channel is it. communicating with the true lumen. Achha. So, and then this is the distal and then the catheter bump. And this is something I would say an over the wire balloon has a difficult time doing because it cannot do all the tortuosity and get through there. Khasa pe jahan pe wire had popped through, there was still some resistance, but you can drive the micro catheter down, you can torque it in. And because it has a tapered tip, yahan pe this is about 1.4 French, this is about 2.3 French. Jab tak ye micro catheter jata hai, it actually starts stretching it out. And once the micro catheter passes, then you can actually get a 1.5 or a 1.25 balloon in there. So, so one of the nice things about the micro catheter is it actually acts as a channel dilator. And this is the final result. And look at that. And Mashallah, what's amazing is, result to hai, but look at all the branches that were preserved, right? I think this is one of the things I've been finding with Carlino happens quite a bit. As opposed to subintimal tracking and reentry, pe once you re-enter and you put a stent into subintima, sari side branches ko band kar deta hai. If you use Carlino, because the contrast breaks into the branches, aksar aapki branches jahan preserved rehti hai. Okay, so, so in the interest of time, I'll tell you that this was my analysis when Tariq Bhai shared the case with me. Um, the problem here was failure to progress in CTO with the fielder FC, okay, and a pilot 200 guy at third because of calcification tortuosity. In fact, this is Tariq Bhai's analysis. I just read it this slide. So, his solution was what he did was he didn't try knuckle and go subintimal, do parallel wiring. What he did something very interesting was to identify the plaque architecture and maybe get more plaque modification by doing Carlino. So, he did uh, plaque modification, fielder XC for a short distance, put it in a fielder XC. Because see that when the knuckle started moving, he, he pulled the fielder FC back, made it straight, and made it go into the uh, true lumen, right? So, this is what he did. So what he did was something interesting, but I think I will. So this is your classic parallel wire technique, which he talks about. You try, you try and get into the true lumen, you try the first wire. If the first wire is plaque, what you go ahead and do is you go ahead and take a second wire with a different property and go alongside it. Now obviously you need a distal injection to show you exactly where to go. And jump you go and you can direct the, you can stay away from the first wire and go to a second wire, to a true lumen. But what, what Tariq Bhai did was actually quite brilliant. He actually modified this with adding Carlino to it. So he changed it, he went into the true lumen, where true lumen wire was not where it was where it was where he stopped right there. He got a second wire, second close to it, but he then punctured the cap at that point and then he used Carlino to redirect. So instead of using the second wire to redirect, because it happened to me, you try one wire and then you go with the second wire and then you end up in a second part of the sub plane, what he did was actually intraplaque contrast injection and then he did a second wire. So this is brilliant. So I call this the Carlino assisted or modified parallel wire technique and, and, and you saw it here first with Tariq Bhai did and I think that was actually a brilliant case. So thank you. So we're done on time. Anyway, any questions? Uh, any, any final comments? Nasir Bhai, and then I'll take some questions. I, I'm, no, I'm going to have Nasir Bhai do a comment quick, and as the expert, and inshallah, we'll come to you. I promise. Yeah, I think uh, excellent cases and uh, excellent demonstration of Carlino. Uh, it's a new technique to, I think, we should uh, incorporate our CTO uh, modalities, and uh, a wonderful presentation uh, by and Dr. Tariq as well. Thank you. Thank you both very much. Hanji. Uh, the difference between tip injection and Carlino, how to differentiate between these two? Wo karne se hi pata chalega, because I don't think pata chal sakta hai. But the point is ki agar aap tip injection karte hain, or you inject the contrast and ends up being a tip injection, there's no problem because you know ki you're close to the cap. You can then use your stiff wire to go just beyond it and then inject again. You're absolutely right. Like in, it's very hard to tell before. It, 
it's it's something which I got through doing Carlino. The, is I'm doing in Carlino technique. The when you uh, pull the plunger back of the syringe, there will be no free blood coming into the syringe. It is Carlino typical Carlino. If the blood is freely coming, it's a dent tip injection, either proximal or distal to the capo or uh, in the. That's a very good point. Actually, you're absolutely right. I should have, I should have, maybe I should have done it. That's the how do you tell, uh, this is for people who, because I told you online you can't always hear the question. So the question from Jalal Bhai is, that if you do an injection, but before you do an injection, how do you tell whether you're inside the, beyond the proximal cap or not? So it's that when you have a wire, thi, now you're flushing, you take the wire out, I'm going to contrast the guy up say, when you start aspirating, if you start getting blood back, then probably you're proximal to the cap. Because cap may go up hand, the CTO may have blood nahi aana chahiye. Or like he said, maybe you've already crossed the CTO, chota CTO tha, and now you're getting blood from the other side. But more likely, if the side, wire is not going, side branch may be the or just side, side branch, branch may hai. But if you don't have any bleed back, then you know you're in the cap and then you can inject. And that's the Carlino. Good point. Uh, well, Dr. Salman, if uh, you fail to cr cross, uh, uh, make progress intra plaque, and you've got a wire extra plaque, like in this case, uh, failure to do that, how do you approach further? What would be your next step? I mean, to cross the lesion. Completely different lecture. <laughs> well, I'm joking. Me. Usme, that's a whole separate thing we can talk about. Ke how reentry techniques kya hain? So obviously, America may they like using the stingray to go around it. Um, if I wanted to stay, if I did not have Stingray, or if I did not want to use Stingray, then I can do two things. One is the classic star technique. In that you have to put your wire, like the field XG or the field FC, and you have to push the knuckle push karte until it pops through. Kahin kahin toh, it will actually go in and pop into it. The problem with that technique is that it's a little unpredictable. Kahin dafa ye hota hai ke you re-enter the vessel much further down. Now, if your RCA head maybe doesn't make a difference, you're still in a major postural lateral branch. If you have LED head and you do this and you enter, re-enter, then your size septal is closed. So that's one problem. The other thing you can do is you can actually do the classic dual wire, right? So if you are in all intima, you can't do anything. If you know that the way the wire is moving, you do a retrograde injection, you stick in the sub intima, you can then switch to a more traditional uh, parallel wire technique and do it that way. And then the third thing is, joke again, I haven't done it, like in ek zamana tha jab log karte the, was contrast induced or contrast mediated star. Wo phir dhralle se contrast inject karte the, hoping ki contrast jo hai, wo kahin se kahin will, will break back into the true lumen. But that was very destructive. So I would say that my preference would be, if you end up being subintimal, is try what Tariq Bhai did, do lumen catheter, or maybe take another catheter, go alongside it, do Carlino. Or what you can do is, you can do a more classic parallel wire technique and try that first. And if you have Stingray, you can try Stingray. And one very simple question, because I'm not sure we've not been using this Carlino technique. Uh, your wire preference in cases, I mean, always when you get such case, you want to go, uh, uh, go using uh, Carlino. Your wire, wire choice, generally. So, so generally to probe the cap is usually fielder XT or maybe hulky pilot, maybe pilot 50 uh, or fielder FC. But to, if I have to puncture the cap, I typically use the Gaia 2. And after the Gaia 2, I will take the same soft tip wire I was using before to probe, fielder XT or FC to see if I can go through that. So between two wires, you should be able to do it. Time? Okay. That's my rubber. Pishli log 15 mein rubber the. I didn't see you coming up then. So anyway, thank you very much. I'll be here for a few more hours. Okay, Coach Swalwar.